You see we have different shirts on. You see our hair is primely done. You see that our pump is in thin fashion, right? Looking good. We had a whole day layoff in between the last video and this one. Yeah, we were busy. My wife had to get the video out pronto, and now I am here to get mine out pronto. I don't know any Spanish words. Chavez Slovakia, we're here to watch the most uh, gross creatures uh, under the sea. From will, Casual Geographic. I will splice in the part where I rant about my wife's fears of the underwater. Splice it in. Should we just leave ourselves like up in the top corner, like no. kind of talking? No. Okay, fade us out. And then, yes. Okay, don't like leave us in there. Yeah. So that's it. So let's get started with the video. Hopefully, you saw part one on my wife's channel. Hey. We feel refreshed, and let's get unrefreshed. What do you have? To, what do you have to say? I would like to know what the deal is with your emotional support starburst that you've been mangling for the past two weeks. So first, I made it into a ball. <laughs> now I'm move, mushing it into a square, <laughs> and I need a fidget toy on my desk apparently <laughs> because I've been killing this thing for like eight videos long. Yeah. Yeah. Don't eat it. It's got fingerprints on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not gonna eat it. Yeah, you shouldn't. Are you gonna eat it? There's a whole bag right here of Starburst, by the way, that we got to make an alcoholic drink with Dr. D like a week ago, and I don't eat candy, so they've just been here the whole and time. And you just, you just, he doesn't eat it. He just destroys it. He Squish mauls it. it. Yeah, I'm just anyway, squishing it. I'm ready to see what this video has in store. Are you ready? You know what it has in store. Deep dive. We just had hagfish in the last <laughs> episode. You know what it has in store. All right, here we go, guys. This adorable little guy is known as a basket star. It's a type of brittle star and an echinoderm, which actually makes it a close cousin of the sea cucumber. If you ever uh -huh. learned about fractals in geometry, then that's why the repeating pattern of branching arms might look familiar. It's also why the US is really wasting Ew. $20 billion a year looking Ew. into space, because the real ET is happening right here. <laughs> because of the unsightly way basket stars get from A to B, they've also earned the nickname sea snakes. I feel itchy all of a sudden. However, even though it looks like something Lucifer Ew. used to pleasure himself, they eat mostly ah. zooplankton and are pretty much harmless for the most part. And honestly, that pretty much describes 80% of the nonsense in the deep sea, only really harmful to your peace of mind. Right. Like take the frilled shark. Having been around for 80 something million years, not only is the <laughs> frilled shark good. a living fossil, it's likely nature's rough draft beta version of sharks today. Oh my also, God. it's the shark with the hump all over again. Oh my, oh my God. You're so <laughs> well, don't let this video fool you. They can grow to a respectable six feet long. Ew. Also, they can be pregnant for three and a half years, which honestly makes about as much sense as everything else down That's there. That's awful. And in terms of your mental health, the frilled oh. shark is pretty harmless until you look them in the mouth. Yeah. The devil's fleshlight has hundreds of needle-like teeth to ensure that anything that gets caught in there doesn't get a second chance to pursue Right, you don't get out. The devil's fleshlight is a horrific <laughs> statement. That is terrifying. <laughs> Who, who writes this type of shit, man? <laughs> like, we've seen so many of his videos, and I'm still not over the way he writes. Yeah, it's very distressing. Just banger after banger. And I thought your head was full of horror. This guy's just got a fountain pen of just, you know. Horror? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and for a shark that's been around long enough to have attended Saturn's wedding, I don't know why, but every picture of them looks like they're struggling with their own existence. Like I said, though, they're not a threat to humans. But like I also said, Therapy ain't cheap, so if you don't want to end up on a couch, don't look a frilled shark in the mouth. Got but it. yeah, you'd be surprised at just how many types of sharks this you'll find in the same darkness. neighborhood SpongeBob got struck. You gotta watch this episode, dude. It's so good. In the mouth. But yeah, it's you'd so be surprised good. at just how many types of sharks you'll find in the same neighborhood SpongeBob got stranded in that one time. You have 20 foot sleeper sharks that are somehow able to use stealth to just spawn and inhale sustenance like a water curvy. Wow. Speaking of sleepers, in 2015, a Pacific sleeper was recorded in the Solomon's Island. Why is that important? Well, its home address was right under an active volcano, proving oh. that if any animal had plot armor, it'd be sharks. Yeah. Nice. Then you have the ghost shark, which, okay, yep, you got me, is it an actual shark? It's a close cousin known as a chimera. Okay. The ghost part, though, uh, that's on brand. They kind of remind me of the dry bones fish from Mario. <laughs> the ghost lion shark doesn't even have the teeth you'd expect it to have, but instead they have plates that they use to grind up food. But since nature's constantly overcompensating, cool. chimeras do have venomous spines that are harmful oh, to more than just your mental well-being. Okay. But by far the weirdest thing about them, chimeras have a tenaculum on their forehead. A tenaculum <laughs> is a reproductive organ. It's I mean, this so fish cute. has a Yeah. They fuck with their faces. They're face fuckers. It gives a whole new meaning to the word dickhead. dickhead. It is. <laughs> He's literally a dickhead. I'm dead. That's crazy. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> on his forehead, venom and that aside, this fish fresh out of Tim Burton's wet dream is actually pretty cool looking. 
And I'm just it's gonna pretty say, dope, yeah. I think they're Look cute, and I'm cute. perfectly fine with That's standing on the cute. hill. Though. However, I don't think you'll find a single soul on this next shark's hill. Okay. Feast your eyes on the goblin, goblin shark. Demon dogs yeah. with a fish with a mouth that snaps like nobody's business. They're rarely seen, but are known to live in oceans all around the world at depths of up to 4,200 feet God, below damn. the surface of the ocean, and are estimated to get to 18 feet long, which is really that's, big for a deep sea shark. Yeah, you might have seen big. videos online of their jaws just fully ejecting from their brain case in a process called slingshot feeding. It's kind of what they're. That's wild. My wife can do that. <laughs> tell, tell him, babe. I did not come here to get roasted. I have other things I could be doing with my time. <laughs> tell him. Tell him, baby. You're so rude. <laughs> they're known for. Their upper and lower jaws lunge forward away from the skull, engulfing their prey. I know it probably seems ridiculous and almost alien. Yeah, ridiculous and alien. <laughs> Tell them. Jaws lunge forward away from the skull, engulfing their prey. I know it probably seems ridiculous oh and almost God. alien, but it's actually not uncommon. Most fishes have jaws that aren't entirely attached. One might argue that the goblin shark is the most extreme example of this look until you see a video of the sling jaw wrasse who use suction feet ah! to snatch up their prey. Yeah, they look like they have cool. a trombone stuck in their mouth. Goblin sharks have a particularly long snap, and it's not for nothing. They have sensory structures, pores <laughs> all over it that help them locate their prey, like squid fish and crustaceans and i am personally grateful i am not a squid fish or crustacean yeah Same. goblin's the right word for the only nice. shark in the world with a receding gum line but you gotta admit <laughs> eating your own jaw to catch calories is pretty metal and you're gonna find that a lot of the creatures rolling in a deep like involve them. some of the most creative ways of bagging groceries probably the most popular is yeah. the fish that nearly turned really cool. into an orphan yeah. that's what messed up uh ichigo's mom oh i hate you the so angler much. demon or whatever also one of the biggest letdowns for a villain ever in anime history. Yeah. Yeah. The anglerfish has two defining personality traits, and one of them is that fishing lure hanging right in front of those life-canceling jaws. That light actually comes from bioluminescent bacteria shacking up inside a modified fin. So when a bite-sized light work swims up to the light thinking it just cops some easy protein, the angler ensures that some fish out there never sees its father so again. Ugly, the dude. other thing so anglerfish got clout for is their mating habits. I'm not gonna get into it, really? just if your marriage looks anything like theirs, you're gonna need both a divorce and a restraining order. And you oh. know, intensive therapy on top of that, expert friggin' diciously. Nemo's paralysis demon isn't the only deep sea creature to weaponize light. This distinguished gentleman is known as a stop light loose jaw, and his defining trait is that it uses a red light to hunt. Which turns out to be a massive Chico, since the longer the wavelength of a color, the less energy that wavelength has, and the faster it gets absorbed by water. And since the color red has the longest wavelength out of all of them, it's the first one to get absorbed. I just watched this This is video. why red light can't reach the deep sea, and the animals living in the abyss that are red actually appear black, which makes it easier for them to hide from predatory smoke. But with a stoplight using red as a searchlight, it's pretty much cracked at this version of hide and seek. Not to mention, since most of the life down there can't even see red, it's able to catch bodies wow. while also not giving up its location to predators wow. or the prey it packs up. This fish really evolved the whole wall hack and a real life invisibility cloak. Tell me that ain't crazy. <laughs> and that freakish overbite ensures that once prey is found, it's lost forever. That's why have prey when you could just sit and wait for it to come to you? That's the entire playbook for the deep sea lizard fish. Just look at that smile. You know he's on nefarious timing. And at over two feet long, they are- kind of look like the Joker. A little bit. A little, a little bit of a Joker smile. A he knows bit. it's messed up what he's doing to people. <laughs> <laughs> the title of being one of the premier apex predators of the deep sea. As a habitual camper, they Ew. lie waiting for life to pass them by before they lunge and use hypodermic needles for teeth to cancel it. Oh now with God. apex standing for anyone providing smoke gets extinguished, lizardfish don't hesitate to turn their own kind into coffin fodder. <laughs> and with the whole point of those teeth being to hold struggling, panicking prey in place, they make sure they don't live long enough to learn from their mistake. Damn. But as much of a therapy build as Gecko <laughs> Guppy's mugshot might be, it might not even be the worst headshot in the ocean. Okay. Not as long as this is yeah. Yeah. Factor. I don't know yeah. anyone who waste the oxygen trying to defend this. Yeah, I would. Many say this is a face <laughs> only a mother could make. Well, then maybe he is my son. This is the deep sea telescope fish, one of the most stunning creatures of the deep tropical oceans. They're found at depths of about 1,600 to 6,600 feet below the surface okay. of the ocean. I can't say that normally. Surface of the ocean. And like you'll see if you look up photos of them online, they are often photographed at unfortunate angles that don't do them any justice. They okay. orient themselves upwards, hanging out vertically in the water column. As they use their specially adapted eyes to hunt for the silhouettes of their prey. There are two. So you said all that. So you better show us a better angle of this fish. This is America. This is 
This is America. This is America's next top model, bitch. There's 1,500 pictures. Find me the good one. I, th I think this is a pretty good one. Isn't it? Is it real, though? Is this a real photo? Or is this like an AI rendering of a photo? I just think they're so far down, we might just take the light that we that reflects off of the fish when we take the picture. Yeah. You know? Shame of the surface of the oh, shit. I can't say that normally. Surface I, just want, I just wanted to hear her say it again. Oh, shit. A few shit. shit. And like you'll see if you look up photos of them online, they are often photographed at unfortunate angles yeah. that don't do them any justice. They orient themselves upwards, hanging out vertically in the water column, as they use their specially adapted eyes to hunt for the silhouettes of their prey. There are two species of telescope fish, okay. Gigantera indica and Gigantera chuni. Don't be fooled by chuni, their genus like the chuni exam. Like the chuni They're gigantic. That is not the case at all. Indica only gets to don't be fooled by their genus name, which species of telescope fish, Gigantera indica and Gigantera it is spelled like the same way too. Yeah, tuning exam. Dang. Tarachuni. Don't be fooled by their genus name, which makes them sound like they're gigantic. That is not the case at all. Indica only gets to about eight inches long, and Chuni a measly six. They are That's just it? little oh. guys. Gigantera actually translates to big tail, specifically. They are about oh. half tail. But if they happen to latch onto a snack that's a bit bigger than their own size, that's no problem at all. They underwent a series of skeletal reductions that allow for more room to just fold it in half. That's right. <laughs> they are expert folders. In 1925, what? scientists found a five and a half inch long viper fish inside the stomach of a three inch long telescope. What? Fish. They described it as neatly folded, an incredible quality possessed by the lovely telescope fish. <laughs> if you get blistics and a hairline restoration surgery, he'd be cute, but that's just me. That being said, there's a lot of pretty dope things just chilling in the deep. Take the barrel-eyed fish. The, fish just the music change is cracking me up. Barrel-eyed fish, though, are so freaking cool. Are they? They're so cool. I'm gonna hear the music switch up again. I'm gonna check it out. Take the barrel-eyed fish. <laughs> the fish with a transparent head that means it can spot ops or prey directly Look above at it. Look at it, it's so Thanks cool. to those two green gummy looking orbs that are actually its eyes. Where are the eyes? The, these, these. I don't understand. That's their eyeballs. They're like little olives, grapes. <laughs> Or the ultra rare giant phantom jellyfish equipped with 30 foot arms dope. that makes this okay, ET understudy cool. the length of a whale shark. And when I wow. say, that, I mean, this jelly's only been seen like a hundred times in the history of mankind. So wow. the fact that you're watching this right now is kind of wild. Yeah. Then you have the deep sea Dumbo octopus Dumbo. that comes from stress by turning itself into a ball to discourage predators from eating. <laughs> and if this right like looks this familiar, one. yeah right to his thighs. <laughs> vampire squid does the inverse as they'll turn themselves inside out and into their own personal panic room whenever they're pressed by a possible predator. Wow. And how about a sea pig for you? Take everything I said <laughs> about sea cucumbers and forget it for a second because honestly, they're just really cute in a way I can't fully explain. Yeah, this explain. is great. But it's not hard to see what makes this squid instant serotonin. Rosia pacifica or the stubby squid is actually more like a cuttlefish. It's also a cuddly fish. And it's nature's apology letter for the sheer trauma it saturated the ocean with. Yeah. It's actually real and those arts and crafts looking eyes help it catch prey on a nocturnal schedule. So it's also pretty. important as an environmental indicator since scientists will often study their responses to changes in water pH and use that to determine how polluted the water is around them. Huh. Which you would think would earn this anime octopus the respect of the scientific community. He looks community. distressed. Or you'd be wrong, there's a video where some scientists found one and let me just say, not even Hiroshima got roasted that hard but that's gonna do it for this video wow. make sure you go ahead and drink water hug your moms go subscribe to Lindsay's channel link will be in the description sure shout out to Lindsay for being in this video Why not? and Thanks. i'm gonna see y'all in the next one okay it's like this i like it's like david jones they look like googly eyes you stop bullying my friend so, so someone that i with him just came before and just left it here it's like some little kid dropped their toy <laughs> <laughs> it went in awesome, he is awesome Oh, that's a good focus right there. Seriously, Great focus, eyes? Justin. It's freaking me out. <laughs> it's freaking me out. <laughs> do something. Do something. <laughs> do something. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> Bro, he's just vibing. That's just his life. He's so cute. This Leave was, my friend alone. This was the most anticipated part two that I've had in a long time yeah, on my channel. Yeah, I was very excited for yeah, it. Thanks for joining me with that one. I was so freaking excited too because they didn't get scarier, they got more cool. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm low-key yeah. kind of upset. This I dude, got the scary ones and he got the cool ones. Got, like, this dude is a freaking badass guy. Like, specialized night, night, uh, nighttime hunter. I like, know. Yeah, man, super what is cool. This? This, is, this, is, this is wrong. You got scammed, for I sure. I did. Yeah. And I, I wasn't even gonna let you have the video. I was just gonna take the whole video for myself, but I was like, no, I'll let my husband have a Casual Geographic video. And now look. 
I got egg on my face, it's but at too, least it's not a dick. That's too late. Yeah, I didn't have the dick fish. <laughs> got a little round octopus, dick fish, red light hunting, the angler fish. Super cool stuff here, man. Thank you so much for having me, babe. You're, uh, you had to be here. Uh, Lindsay's channel is where we'll be next for the next anime reaction, probably. Uh, we'll check that out. I got a bad friend trying to laugh challenge. It didn't go the greatest, but I'm putting it up anyways. I'm very sorry. Uh, what do you got on your channel up right now? Um, I'm, I have some overly sarcastic productions. I've got Excellent. some SCP content. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. Look who came crawling I, oh back. Oh my god. Which one did you do this time? Um, I did SCP-106, The Old Man. Oh, I like The Old Man. Yeah. That's a solid one. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Did you do the potato dimension yet? No. Oh, yeah, that's a cool one, man. What about the Ikea? No. You haven't done the Ikea yet? No. Ikea coming next on Jacqueline's oh my channel God. for SCP content. We'll see you guys in the next one. Please leave a recommendation for other animal uh, fact videos if you can find any. But we'll do some from Lindsay's channel for sure. Peace. Bye.